when I was eight years old, I became obsessed with Mary Tyler Moore. It was the early 90s, and Nick at Night had just started rebroadcasting older sitcoms, including the Mary Tyler Moore show, and I remember sitting there in my living room in my Care Bears nightgown in front of the television. And from the moment the theme song started, I was hooked. I loved everything about this Mary Richards person. I loved that she was starting over again in a new city by herself, and she had this great apartment, and that everyone in her life just adored her. And I adored her, and I very quickly started to revolve my little eight-year-old life around watching and obsessing over the Mary Tyler Moore show, making sure I was home, when there were reruns on and making sure we had enough VHS tapes in the house in the event of a Mary-thon. And since Mary was back on TV, she was also sort of back in the news, so TV Guide put out this great issue with a big picture of Mary on the front and all these cast photos inside, so I made my mom buy me like 17 copies. I just, I couldn't get enough of this show or of Mary, and I felt most at home when I was sitting there watching the Mary Tyler Moore show and it was at a time in my childhood when I wasn't really feeling that comfort um, anywhere else. Uh, my father, who I loved more than anybody in the world, had died just a couple of years before that when I was six years old. And in addition to you know the obvious heartbreak of losing somebody who was very much at the center of my world, it was also a very isolating experience. I suddenly couldn't really relate to the kids at school anymore who suddenly seemed so much younger to me. And I couldn't really connect to my family anymore who just, they, it seemed to me that I was always thinking about my dad and how much I missed him, but nobody at home was talking about him, and it, it felt like I shouldn't really bring him up either because I didn't want to make anybody sad, so I always just smiled and talked about happy things, but on the inside I was feeling very sad and very alone, and for whatever reason, um, I felt very comforted when I was in the presence of Mary Richards and all of her friends. And so the more I watched the show and obsessed over it, the more I really wanted to meet Mary Tyler Moore and like be friends with her. And that almost seemed like a real possibility when a couple years later we get the internet for the first time in school and it's this new thing and it's, it's weird and nobody really knows what it is, but it's exciting. And I'm in the computer room one day and um, my computer teacher and I are pretty close, so she knows all about my Mary Tyler Moore obsession. And she comes up to me and she's like, Nicole, you have email now and I have Mary Tyler Moore's email address. Do you want to write to her and tell her what a big fan you are? And I was like, yeah, of course I want to do that. So she hands me this piece of paper and it says mtmmary at prodigy.net on it. So I sit down at the computer and I, I start writing this note, Dear Mary, my name is Nicole. I'm your biggest fan in the whole world. Thank you so much for making the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I love it and I love you. Love, Nicole. So I hit send and I look up at my computer teacher and she looks down at me and we're smiling and it's a really special moment, we're very excited. And then I go to the rest of my classes and I go home that night after school and I'm in bed and I surround myself in bed with the 17 copies of the TV guide and make a shrine to Mary and I just stay up all night, you know, really excited to go to school the next day and see if she writes back. So the next day comes, I go in really early, I, I sit down at the computer, I start logging in it probably takes like 26 and a half minutes because it's the early days of dial-up internet. But finally I get there and there it is in my inbox, a response. And it says, Dear Nicole, thank you so much for your note. I'm so glad you love the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Love, Mary. So this is the greatest thing that could ever happen to me, basically. I feel like... Uh, thousands of presents have just been dropped in my lap or whatever a normal kid would be excited about I feel like that thing has just happened to me so I immediately hit reply because I want to keep this going and I'm like hi thanks for writing back are you still friends with Rhoda and Mr. Grant and I hit send <laughs> and then you know I go to class again and I go home and make the shrine and then I go to school again the next day and bam there's another response. Yes, I'm still friends with Rhoda and Mr. Grant. So this is excellent. And, you know, we keep going on like this for a little while. I, I tell her more things about me, like, hey, guess what? I won the spelling bee. And, you know, I, I got the part of the tree and the giving tree. And it's, you know, I, I keep it rolling. And But I, I want to I wanna keep the relationship alive, but I'm careful to keep it keep it casual for a little while because little does my computer teacher know when she orchestrates this whole thing is that one of the reasons I really want to meet and get to know Mary Tyler Moore in addition to just you know loving her is that 
over the course of my obsession, I learned things about her. And one of the things that I learned is that she has this. She had this son who died, and very early on, and she had lost a sibling early on as well. And I realized, you know, she's suffered a lot of loss, and I've suffered loss too. And like, maybe she needs somebody to talk to, and maybe no one's talking to her about her sadness. And I can help her, and she can help me. And you know, this is going to be a good thing. So I want to bring this up, but I, I don't want to bring it up too soon. I want to make sure that we're really like establishing a bond first before I go there. So a couple of weeks go by and I decide that we're basically best friends. And I sit down and I write this note, Dear Mary, listen, I know that your son died and I wanted to tell you that I'm very sorry. And um, my father died too when I was six years old. And I just wanted you to know that if you needed to talk to anybody, I can understand what you're feeling and I'm here for you. So I hit send and... That night I go home and it's a little bit different. This time I stay up all night imagining what's going to come of this. I figure most likely Mary and I are going to go on Oprah together and we're going to talk about our newfound best friendship and weep about how we rescued one another from our repressed grief and it's going to be great. So the next morning I go to school and I log in, but this time there's no response from Mary. So I think okay, you know, this is a heavy subject. I'm going to give it another day, and I'm sure it'll be fine. But the next day comes, and there's no response, and the day after that, and I never hear from Mary again. And at first, I feel really bad about myself. Like, I've clearly done something wrong. Uh, obviously, you're not supposed to talk about death. I should have taken a cue from my family. You're not supposed to bring these things up, and now I have ruined my relationship with Mary, and I feel very ashamed. And I feel that way for about you know, a year and a half before I realize and confirm that it was never Mary Tyler Moore I was emailing with to begin with. It was my computer teacher thinking she was doing something nice for me and not trying to scar me for life, but what are you going to do? And unfortunately, this isn't the last time that a faculty member at my grammar school decided to trick me about Mary Tyler Moore. I don't know really what was going on there, but a couple of years later, I'm in sixth grade, and my class goes to Boston for a field trip, and I'm, I'm coming out of the restroom in Quincy Market, and my sixth grade teacher and all the class chaperones are standing there looking very somber, and they're like, Nicole, we're so sorry. Mary Tyler Moore was just walking through Quincy Market. She was wearing a name tag that said Mary Richards, which makes no sense, but I believed it anyway. Way. She's wearing a name tag. We tried to keep her here for you, but she had to go. We're sorry. And I'm like, what? And I just start hysterically crying, and I throw all of my souvenirs in the garbage, because who cares about anything anymore? And then I look at them, and they're like, oh, sorry, that went wrong. We were just kidding. You know, Mary was not here. So as angry as I am that they even played this trick on me, I'm also relieved, because that would be the worst thing. For me to be in a place where Mary is and just miss her would be a nightmare and can never, ever happen. Right. So fast forward to a few years ago, because this obsession never goes away, and I'm coming out of, uh, the, of the theater with my family, and we, we've just seen a very emotional Broadway show, and we exit onto Schubert Alley and 45th Street, and um, it's, it's crazier than ever in the theater district. There's people everywhere, and there are these trucks lined up down the street with cats and dogs up for adoption and I'm with my family and and my cousin looks at me and she's like Nicole I gotta get out of here or I'm going to adopt another dog and I can't adopt another dog we must go so I'm like okay and I usher my family toward 8th Avenue and we get into a taxi and head back to the Upper East Side where I'm living at this point and we go out to dinner and we have drinks and everything and finally they go home and I go back to my apartment and um, I get in bed and I, I log on to Facebook and I'm, I'm poking around and I see that a, an acquaintance of mine from a writing class has posted photos of that same theater I had come out of with the same cat and dog trucks and everything. So, and I, I see it's the same exact time of day that I was there. And so I start clicking around on her photos. I'm curious to see what she saw. And there, in that crowd of people, 
that I was just in is Mary Tyler Moore. And there she is again in the next photo and the one after that. So I immediately freak out because that thing that was never supposed to happen where Mary Tyler Moore and I are in the same exact location and I just miss her has officially happened, confirmed on Facebook. And it, worse is that it only takes a half a second of Googling for me to realize that this cat and dog situation that I ran away from was the annual event, Broadway Barks, that Mary Tyler Moore has been hosting with Bernadette Peters every single year in Manhattan for like the past two decades. And so I, the greatest Mary Tyler Moore fan ever, don't know anything about this. And so, you know, I do what any rational person would do. I close the lid on my laptop and I pull the covers over my head and I hope to die in my sleep. But when I inconveniently awake the next morning, I have a fresh perspective. I realize, you know what, this isn't the worst. It sucks, but it's not the worst because now I know about this thing and I can just go next year. That's it. It's done. It's it's instant access to Mary, putting it on my calendar, I'm going. So the next year comes along, I have it on my calendar well ahead of time. That morning I have my alarm set for like 4 a.m. so I can get down there and secure the best possible spot to be really close to Mary. And of course, it's July, it's 6,000 degrees out, it also is raining, and I get down there, I get a good spot, and very quickly the alley where this event is held becomes very crowded with people and not just people but dogs and not just dogs but wet dogs including this really enormous golden retriever that decided it was going to rest its very heavy face on my foot for the entire duration of this multi-hour event but it was fine i was doing this for mary so finally this thing is about to begin and i don't know why but i just know what's about to happen and Bernadette Peters comes out on stage and she's just being adorable and Bernadette Petersy and she's like, welcome everybody, thank you so much for coming. Unfortunately, Mary Tyler Moore is not going to make it today. And there's sort of this like audible sigh that happens throughout the crowd, but I'm not there. I'm in my head where I'm going through all five stages of grief at once. Like, I'm like, that's, of course that's not true. She's going to come out any second now. And then I'm angry, like, how could she do this to me? And then I bargain a little, like, well, maybe if I let the dog sleep on my foot for another half hour, she's going to come out as, like, my karmic reward. And then I start to cry a little bit, and then I accept it. She's not coming. And I realize in that moment that it's okay, because... Even though this sounds crazy to me, I don't think I even want to meet her anymore. I realize that I don't know what I would get from it at this point, and it certainly wouldn't compare to what she had given me all those years ago when she appeared on my television screen and gave me something to feel excited about and something to connect to again at a time when I really needed that. So, no, I don't think that I really need to meet Mary Tyler Moore anymore, but I will always be grateful to her and to that show for coming into my life at a really important time and making me think, you know what, I might just make it after all. Thank you. <laughs>